the greatest drawback of moving forward on deploying electric buses. I don't think there are any drawbacks. I can't think of any drawbacks. <laughs> I'm at one of DC's electric bus charging stations and when I first came to DC I didn't even know that there were electric buses or that they could be entirely battery powered but now here we are we're seeing it in real life. I talked to some experts working with electric vehicles let's see what they say. We cannot achieve our climate goals without addressing transportation. I didn't realize the percentage was so high but transportation accounts for 28 percent of all US greenhouse gas emissions. The prospect of cutting that number down through electric vehicles has a lot of people excited. The performance of these vehicles is very, very good. You have very low maintenance. The battery performance has been getting better and better. The cost has been dropping a lot. Many parts of the country are starting to realize the benefits of electric vehicles. Washington, D.C. was one of the first in the country to adopt electric buses into their transportation fleets. Eric Belmont, who is a program analyst for the District Department of Transportation, gave me the inside scoop for how D.C.'s electric bus program is going so far. We just got 14 electric buses and we put them into service, so we just want to see how they work. We paid probably a little over a million dollars for electric buses. Our diesel buses, for comparison, are about 690000 Studies show that the overall cost may balance that out over time. DC projects that they'll save $6 million over the 12-year lifespan of this fleet of electric buses. Electric buses don't have to deal with as many parts. They don't have as many liquids. A uh, diesel engine, it's massive, with dozens and dozens of parts. With an electric bus, all you have is the motor. The fact that electric buses have no tailpipe emissions sounds great, but the electricity generation for powering the buses still can give out greenhouse gas emissions depending on the source. Overall, these emissions are still way lower than the diesel alternative. Long term, we'll, we'll be uh, looking at making sure that we get our power from a sustainable source. So not only are we having zero emissions on the tailpipe, but we're getting zero emissions from the source of electricity. Being a regular bus commuter, I especially care about how electric buses reduce air pollution's negative effects on people's health. A big cause of lung-related health issues from, from buses are from diesel particulate matter. We need to be doing as much as we can. The mayor made a priority because it's, it's good for our customers, it's good for our residents. But not every city has the same political support as DC. Rick Nuno studies the policy issues surrounding electric buses. Well, they need of infusion of cash <laughs> to pay for the, the initial investment. The FTA has been withholding money that was appropriated by Congress uh, both in 2017 and 2018 just because they don't like public transit. Despite inconsistent government support, the electric vehicle market is expected to boom worldwide in the next few decades. Projections are even higher for electric buses. To make these numbers a reality, we just need our politicians to be as excited as people like Carol are. I think that all of us who care about climate, about air pollution, about public health, want to see this all accelerated. In practice, cities are less concerned with crossing the finish line first and more focused on successful rollouts of their programs. We're taking the approach of testing the technology, being thoughtful about it, and determining uh, what our approach is going to be. Thus far, we're very pleased with the performance. I think another thing that we're very pleased about is when people don't know when they can say this is normal. Riding an electric bus is just like riding any other bus. The most exciting part of the program for me is that it's been going on for five months and I just found out about it. If we can make such a large part of our transportation system more sustainable without disrupting people's lives, what else can we be doing better?